what is happening. The Wall Street Journal has renewed environmental criticism of SpaceX's Starship program, prompting an immediate and forceful response. In orbit, a Starlink satellite has run into technical trouble. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab is ending 2025 on a high note, setting records and gaining momentum. Let's break it all down on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We are now in the final days of 2025, yet some stories from earlier in the year refuse to fade away. One of those stories has returned to the spotlight, drawing renewed attention and sparking fresh debate across the space industry. This time, the focus is on a Starship flight that took place at the very beginning of the year, specifically on the 16th of January. That mission was known as Starship Flight 7, and it marked a major milestone in SpaceX's development program. It was the first flight of the Starship V2 design, a vehicle intended to address lessons learned from earlier test flights while pushing performance and reusability further than ever before. The flight featured B-14 paired with S-33. From a booster recovery standpoint, the mission was an undeniable success. B-14 executed a precise return and was caught by the Mechazilla arms at Starbase. Many observers described this as the most successful Starship booster landing achieved up to that point. The maneuver demonstrated improved guidance, structural integrity, and confidence in SpaceX's rapidly evolving recovery systems. However, the mission did not end on the same high note for the upper stage. S-33 did not complete its planned flight profile. Instead, it experienced a catastrophic failure during ascent. The vehicle lost control and ultimately exploded, ending its journey far earlier than intended. In the weeks that followed, SpaceX conducted an internal investigation and later disclosed the root cause of the failure. According to the company, a strong harmonic reaction developed during flight. This reaction led to an oxygen and fuel leak in the cavity located above the engine firewall. As pressure rapidly built up beyond the venting system's capacity, the onboard flight termination system was automatically triggered. The result was the destruction of the vehicle. One particularly striking outcome of this failure was the debris pattern. For the first time, starship fragments were visible, streaking across the sky, resembling shooting stars. Images and videos calculated, circulated, Images and videos circulated widely online, capturing public attention and fueling discussion well beyond the aerospace community. This incident has been discussed extensively throughout the year, and many assumed the conversation had largely concluded. However, the topic resurfaced recently after the Wall Street Journal published an article that revisited the Flight 7 mishap and framed it within a broader discussion of environmental and aviation safety concerns. In its reporting, the Wall Street Journal stated that FAA documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal show an explosion of SpaceX's Starship on the 16th of January posed a greater danger to planes in the air up over the Caribbean than was publicly known. This assertion quickly attracted attention due to its implications for commercial aviation safety and regulatory oversight. According to the article, three specific aircraft were identified as being affected during the incident. These included a JetBlue flight traveling from Boston to Puerto Rico, an Iberia Air Airlines flight and a private jet. Together, these aircraft were said to be carrying approximately 450 passengers. The newspaper further claimed that these planes were forced to pass through airspace that may have been contaminated by rocket debris or else face the possibility of running low on fuel over open ocean. Based on this interpretation, the Wall Street Journal suggested that the Starship launch posed a greater risk to aviation safety than had been publicly disclosed at the time. The article then expanded its scope, raising concerns about the implications of SpaceX, increasing the frequency of Starship launches in the failure. However, this assessment has drawn significant criticism, particularly from those familiar with how aerospace management and launch safety protocols actually function. Several key points appeared to undermine the conclusions presented in the article. First, following the Flight 7 mishap, the FAA conducted a formal investigation. That investigation concluded that there were no public injuries associated with the incident. Airlines involved confirmed that all flights landed safely and that no immediate safety risks were encountered. 
From a regulatory standpoint, the incident was managed within established procedures. Because of this, the Wall Street Journal's decision to revisit the event nearly a year later struck many as puzzling. Critics have suggested that the article relied heavily on anonymous sources and speculative interpretations rather than new or materially different evidence. Some have gone so far as to argue that the framing reflects a broader skepticism towards SpaceX rather than a neutral reassessment of known facts. SpaceX did not remain silent in response Response, the company issued a lengthy and pointed public statement via social media. It opened by characterizing the article as yet another misleading story by the Wall Street Journal. The company went on to challenge the technical understanding underlying the article's claims. SpaceX stated that the reporting demonstrated a complete lack of understanding of the robust tools used by safety officials to manage airspace. These tools, the company emphasized, are well-defined, science-based, and have been highly effective at protecting public safety for decades. SpaceX further criticized what it described as false narratives built on conjecture and unscientific analysis derived from anonymous sources. According to the company, such reporting does a disservice to the public by undermining confidence in established safety systems without offering accurate context. To clarify its position, SpaceX reiterated that safety is the top priority on every launch. The company stated unequivocally that no aircraft were placed in danger during the Flight 7 incident. Any debris generated by the failure, SpaceX explained, remained within pre-coordinated response areas. These areas were developed in collaboration with the U.S. Space Force and implemented by the FAA. The hazard zones established for the launch covered a vast region and were designed to account for worst-case scenarios. As a result, any aircraft operating nearby were actively routed in real time around areas where debris was contained within the larger pre-coordinated hazard zone. This dynamic airspace management ensured that commercial aviation safety was maintained throughout the event. In closing, SpaceX reaffirmed its broader commitment to responsible airspace usage. The company stated that it remains fully committed to protecting people on the ground, at sea, and in the air during launches and re-entries. Looking ahead, SpaceX also outlined its plans for the coming years. As Starship flight cadence increases and missions begin launching from Florida in 2020, SpaceX stated that it will continue to prioritize maximum public safety. At the same time, the company aims to integrate Starship more efficiently into shared airspace, following the same successful approach that has already been demonstrated with Falcon 9. This confidence is not without precedent. Falcon 9 has flown hundreds of times, and despite its high launch rate, it has rarely caused disruptions or safety incidents. SpaceX clearly intends for Starship to follow a similar trajectory, eventually achieving an even higher level of of reliability. Returning to the broader safety debate, it's important to remember that Starship remains a developmental vehicle. SpaceX's engineering philosophy differs significantly from that of many traditional aerospace companies. The company is willing to accept failure as part of an iterative process designed to accelerate learning and improvement. This approach has enabled rapid progress, but it also invites criticism, particularly when failures are highly visible. This tension was especially evident during Starship flights in 2023 and 2024. During that period, the FAA and environmental agencies conducted lengthy investigations following several test flights. These investigations, which lasted months in some cases, significantly slowed the program's momentum. More importantly, conditions have improved. Officials publicly criticized inefficiencies in the FAA's processes, prompting internal reforms aimed at streamlining oversight without compromising safety. These changes have helped reduce delays and allowed development to proceed more steadily. Even so, SpaceX's path to orbit has not been shaped by technical challenges alone. Regulatory and institutional obstacles have also played a significant role. In some respects, these challenges affect not just SpaceX, but the broader area aerospace industry. Prolonged delays and uncertainty risk slowing innovation at a time when global competition is intensifying. This concern becomes even more serious when viewed through a geopolitical lens. While regulatory bottlenecks persist in the U.S., rival space programs, including those in China, continue to advance rapidly. Excessive friction in domestic development could ultimately erode long-standing advantages in launch capability and space infrastructure. For this reason, many argue that change is 
is necessary. As NASA enters a new chapter under a new administrator, there is growing expectation that the agency will take a more active role in supporting commercial partners. The latter half of this decade includes several critical missions, and success will depend on effective collaboration between government and industry. So what do you think about the renewed controversy between SpaceX and the Wall Street Journal? Do you believe SpaceX is still taking the right approach? Share your thoughts by responding keep going in the comment section down below. Then don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. Now let us shift our focus to orbit and discuss Starlink, which also experienced a minor issue recently. By now, most people are aware that Starlink is the largest satellite constellation ever deployed. SpaceX has launched more than 10,800 Starlink satellites to date. Of those, over 9,000 are currently in orbit and operational. Together, they account for roughly 65% of all active spacecraft orbiting Earth. With a system of that scale, a higher absolute number of anomalies is statistically unavoidable. On the 17th of December, one Starlink satellite experienced a malfunction that resulted in a loss of communication with ground control. The satellite was operating at an altitude of approximately 418 kilometers. In a public statement, SpaceX explained that Starlink Satellite 35956 experienced an anomaly that led to venting of its propulsion tank. This caused a rapid decay in its orbit with a reduction in semi-major axes of about 4 kilometers. The event also resulted in the release of a small number of trackable objects with low relative velocity. SpaceX stated that it is coordinating closely with the U.S. Space Force and NASA to monitor the situation. Regarding the satellite's condition, SpaceX reported that it remains largely intact but is tumbling. It is expected to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and fully disintegrate within weeks. The company emphasized that the satellite's trajectory places it below the International Space Station, posing no risk to the orbiting laboratory or its crew. SpaceX reaffirmed its commitment to space safety, stating that it takes orbital incidents seriously and is actively investigating the recent Starlink anomaly. Engineers are already deploying software updates to strengthen safeguards. Starlink satellites are designed for a short lifespan of about five years and are intentionally deorbited before failure to limit debris. Even so, congestion remains a challenge. In the first half of the year alone, SpaceX conducted roughly 145,000 collision avoidance maneuvers. Last week, a Chinese spacecraft passed within about 200 meters of a Starlink satellite after no coordination occurred, highlighting the growing risk created by poor or operator communication. Despite this, the incident poses little concern, and SpaceX's rapid transparent response underscores the maturity of its operations. And for our final piece of today's updates, Rocket Lab is closing out a landmark year. On the 21st of December, the company successfully launched an electron rocket carrying Japan's QPS-SAR-15 radar satellite, marking its seventh mission for IQPS and its final launch of 2025. Rocket Lab completed 21 missions this year with a perfect success rate, exceeding both its previous record and its stated goals. Chief Executive Officer Peter Beck celebrated this achievement, drawing praise from Elon Musk and NASA Administrator Jared Isaacman. These results cement Rocket Lab's position as the second second most active launch provider behind SpaceX and set the stage for its next major step, the debut of the reusable Neutron rocket. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.